Christianity of the West? You know it. You know Christianity of the West? Very easy to recognize it. It is a Christianity which believes in a fellow with a very big beard. The only one allowed to keep a beard. Everybody has to shave off their beard. But he's allowed to keep his beard. Big, big white beard. And once a year he comes on a reindeer running, crying to the sky. Yeah. Yeah. And he's in every shopping mall now. Every shopping mall. This is the Western Christianity. And they celebrate their Christmas on December 25th, but not the other one. The other Christianity does not have Christmas on 25th of December. And the other Christianity is the one which still has monasticism. You can say what you want about them, but you cannot dispute the fact that these are a people who are different from the West. That one in the West is arrogant. The arrogance of that Christianity in the West, which has allied itself with Jews in a Judeo-Christian Zionist alliance, is that it wants to transform the rest of the world into carbon copies of itself. So if you were to put on a sarong, huh? nice for this kind of weather, sarong is very comfortable. Look at that native. Huh? Look at that native. If you want to be civilized, you got to dress the way we dress. You got to put on trousers and shirt and tie and a jacket. And then you are civilized. They want us to all become carbon copies of themselves. So if you serve me curry fish and rice, that they eat with knife and fork and spoon and so on, and if we want to eat a nasi biryani and we wash our hands and eat and I roll up my sleeve and I wash my hands and like a good Malay, I eat with my hand, my fingers. That's the only way you could eat curry fish and rice. They say, what a barbarian he is. This is uncivilized. You should eat the way we eat with cutlery. Yeah, curry fish and rice. With cutlery. You must dress the way we dress. Take off that dirty beard from off your face. A civilized man is clean shaven. A civilized man wears a shirt and trousers and jacket and tie. I say that's arrogance. And there are many of you who say the same thing as that. That's arrogance. Who are these people? They are the Western European Judeo-Christian Alliance. Well, I say to you, you can take your civilization and throw it in a garbage bin. Because I'm not impressed with your scientific and technological revolution and all this gadgetry that you're bringing to the world, when in your civilization, the highest thing you've ever achieved is a man can marry another man and get a marriage certificate. That is your highest achievement. A man can marry another man and get a marriage certificate, and yet everybody wants a visa to go and live amongst you. That is heaven. Who wants to go and live in Bangladesh? Who wants to go and live in Egypt? Who wants to go back to Algeria? No! That's heaven, where a man can marry another man and get a marriage certificate. Guess what Allah did to those who are doing that? Guess what he did to Solomon Gomorrah? Gomorrah. And guess what he's going to do to you tomorrow? Yes. He destroyed them with a destruction that sent them to the lowest part of the earth, with evidence to remain for, forever. This is Allah's punishment on them. Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, the people of Lut. And what he did to them, he'll do to this world. When you, you are content to live amongst the people 
who legitimize and legalize the marriage of a man with another man, that's your highest achievement. I went to Russia, and when I went to Russia, I saw lots of beards. Oh, yes, lots of beards in Russia. These are not an arrogant people. They don't want to rule the world. They don't want to transform all of mankind into carbon copies of themselves. No, that's those Christians. These Christians are different. And because Russia is prepared, is not prepared to submit. And China is not prepared to submit. It's going to check meet them and NATO can do nothing to stop it. Praise be to Allah who allowed us to understand the Quran. They're going to be checkmated. A nuclear war would be one in which Nuclear powers will use every single nuclear weapon that they possibly can use. Because it's going to be a fight to the finish. And so the world can now expect that if a nuclear war were to take place, Excuse me, too late now to say if, rather it should be when the nuclear war takes place. The only ones who don't know that a nuclear war is coming are those, you know, Roti Chanai, Tetari people. When the nuclear war takes place, because they've already declared war on Russia. If you're living in France and Britain, and in Western Europe, and if you don't know that your leaders have declared war on Russia, and the nuclear war is now inevitable, and when that nuclear war takes place, that thousands of nuclear weapons will explode. If you don't know that, then you are living in dreamland. And if you hope to survive, in Western Europe, you're also living in dreamland. That's the price you pay for having Zionist rulers ruling over you. That's the price. I hope you're listening to me, Europe. I hope you're listening to me in Europe. And I hope you're listening to me in the United States and Canada. That is the price that you will pay for having those ruling over you who are ruling on behalf of the Zionists who are Zionists and the nuclear war is now inevitable the war which is coming the big nuclear war which is coming to which we refer subsequently inshallah is meant to deliver to Israel something called Pax Judaica which will replace Pax Americana, which itself replaced Pax Britannica. That's why they want the big war. The war is coming because Russia is challenging their bogus monetary system, that's why. It's not because of Syria. It's not because of Ukraine. It's because of something called BRICS. And so I share with you now, finally, that the Khilafah state would recognize the Orthodox Christian world, which today is led by Russia. That these are the people Allah is talking about in the Quran. That they will be closest in love and affection for you. I know Bosnia and Albania and Montenegro are so very uncomfortable with me now. <laughs> but I have a job to do. It's for you to learn. And guidance comes from the Quran, not from NATO. <coughs> yes, Bosnia. 
Yes, Albania, yes, Montenegro, yes, Kosovo. Guidance comes from the Quran, not from Washington, okay? So Allah is telling you as plain as a billboard on the road to the airport. These are the Christians who in Akhir Zaman will be closest in love and affection for you. But they are both in the Quran and in the Hadith indications that we will conquer Constantinople on the basis of an alliance with Orthodox Christians. It will be a Muslim Christian army that will conquer Constantinople. Which Christians will this be? Shall I remind you? Yes. And if you do not build alliances, illam tafa'aluhu, takun fitnatun fil ardi wa fasadun kabir. I do not need the hadith for arguing the case for an alliance with Rome. I do not need the Hadith. The Quran is enough for me to argue the case for a Muslim alliance with Rome in Akhiru Zaman. And no Hadith and no part of a Hadith can challenge the Quran. And so this is what we have to do at this time to build alliances within ourselves so the house of Islam becomes stronger and build alliances with those who have the closest love the closest in love and affection for us so we can face a common enemy the hadith then ends Fathul Constantinia Khurujid Dajjal that after the conquest of Constantinople only then will Dajjal make his appearance in human form. Because now, it's there around the neck of Israel. Israel can't get away now. Finish. Dajjal took them for a ride. It's the last ride on which they'll ever go. And now they'll face the end that Pharaoh faced when he was drowning. They will end the same way that Pharaoh ended. That's the end of Israel. They will now realize the truth that Pharaoh realized underneath the water. And they will die accepting that truth as Pharaoh died accepting the truth 